Hi everybody, this is Father Warner and it's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock is with Father Warner. Today is the feast of St. Andrew and the text of today is taken from Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 to 22. St. Andrew was a native of Bethsaida in Galilee, a fisherman by trade and a former disciple of John the Baptist. Andrew was at John's side when Jesus, whom John had recently baptized, walked by. Look, here is the Lamb of God, John exclaimed. You can read this in John chapter 1, verse 36. Andrew, together with his more famous brother Peter, whom he introduced to Jesus, is the first to be called by Jesus to follow him. It is for this reason he is called the Protoclete, or the first called apostle. Interestingly, while he is overshadowed by his brother Peter, he continues to be the one who introduces souls to Christ. After Pentecost, Andrew took up the apostolate on a much wider scale and is said to have been martyred at uh, Patras in southern Greece on a cross which was in the form of an X. This type of cross has long been known as St. Andrew's cross. The name Andrew is related to the Greek word for man, aner, or in the genitive andros. It originally meant something like manly. It is interesting that Andrew's name is of Greek origin, not Aramaic or Hebrew. This is indicative of a certain cultural openness uh, in his family. The fact that their father Jonah or Jonas gave his elder son Simon an Aramaic name and his younger son Andrew a Greek name reflects the mixed Jewish Gentile environment uh, that they lived in in Galilee. In today's Gospel, we hear St. Matthew's version of the calling of the first four disciples. Andrew and Peter were casting their nets into the sea while James and John were mending their nets. Both the sets of brothers immediately left their nets they left their boats and their father and they followed Jesus. The words in Greek for follow me is akolo theo, which translates as accompany or assist. It is from this word that we get the English word acolyte. It is they who are called to assist in teaching the word with Jesus. They become the ministers of the word in Matthew chapters 5 to 7 and then again the ministers of the deed in chapters 8 to 9. Peter, Andrew, James and John set a wonderful example of readiness. There is no shortly or maybe tomorrow or I'm busy just right now. The disciples were apparently inspired by the mission and made radical commitments to this Jesus movement. The Roman Empire relied on threat, it relied on coercion, it relied on enticements to recruit people into its military. The New Kingdom, on the other hand, this Kingdom of Jesus, inspires people to participate in it, not out of force or threat. Perhaps what we need to ask ourselves is, what nets do I need to leave in order to follow Jesus wholeheartedly? What obstacles, what material attachments? What comfort zones have wound themselves so tightly around me that I cannot get up and follow him? It would do well for us to remember that the calling of Jesus is rooted in God, not in us. Jesus chose them and he chooses us. It may well happen that we can be self-absorbed, that we think that everything begins and ends with us. This calling is very significant so much so that towards the end of their three years together, as he prepares them to go forth after his death and resurrection, he reminds them in John chapter 15 verse 16, you did not choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. The calling of Jesus rooted in God, originates in God, emanates from God. It is his initiative and it is his choice. It is also very comforting for us to know that Jesus calls simple men like these. They were not super duper saints and that gives us hope that he, he may even be able to use a person like you, a person like me. 
the important thing is for us to give ourselves to him. This narrative of the call of St. Andrew is quite appropriate for the beginning of Advent because Advent must be a time when Jesus calls us anew. It must be a new beginning and a new conversion for us. As Advent begins, we should hear Jesus call to us, follow me. We should hear him invite us with an invitation to give ourselves completely to his divine plan and purpose. And so I invite you to join me in prayer. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we are just entered into this beautiful season of Advent and you give us the feast of St. Andrew. I want to thank you, Lord, because for so many years I worshipped in a church whose patron was St. Andrew in Bandra. I want to thank you for the inspiration that this simple fisherman was to me. I want to pray for my own commitment. So often, Lord, I, I want to give up. I want to just stop. I feel tired. I feel exhausted. I feel discouraged and disappointed. But then again, I see how you work in my life. You work through my little faith, my unbelief. You lift me up and you call me to follow you once again. In that, Lord, you call each one of us to follow you on a daily basis because life is never going to be easy. Following you is never going to be a bed of roses. I want to pray for all those, Lord, who struggle through their day. And I pray, Lord, that just as you touch my life and show me that you love me, I pray that today, for all those who are viewing this video, they may see your hand, your presence, your comforting shadow fall over them. Bless us, Lord, as we go deeper into the season of Advent, a season of preparation, a season of anticipation, a season of waiting. We do not know, Lord, the hour or the moment when you should call us. But we certainly know this, that it will not be a moment of fear, it will be a moment of joy. Death is not the end of our lives, it's the beginning of eternity with you and make us worthy, Lord, of those mysteries that you promised us. But till then, keep our hearts pure, keep our minds clean, keep us focused on you and you alone. I pray for all our online viewers, Lord, for their love, their charity, their kindness, for their support. We've entered this new liturgical year, Lord. Make our lives anew and renew our commitment. May we renew our commitment to you. In your loving name, I make this prayer. Amen. I want to give a special blessing today to the sick. If you are ill for any reason, I felt very called just now because I felt deep down that there is somebody who needs a blessing who is sick. So if it is you, May I ask you to please bow your head as I bless you. May Jesus heal you. May God guide you. And may the Holy Spirit cover you with its shadow. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is also, though, as I said, the Feast of St. Andrew and I come from the parish of St. Andrew in Bandra. I want to use this opportunity to wish all my parishioners, my former parishioners, I received my confirmation there I grew up, I spent um, my early child, my early youth there. I sang in the choir. Um, we didn't have a youth group then, if I remember well, but uh, I do remember today in a very special way, Father Jude uh, Pereira, who used to conduct those fantastic confirmation um, classes for us in the Bosco Hall. Um, so many happy memories, uh, our friends in the choir, now all over the world. Um, I remember Brunel, I remember Lindsay, um, I, can, I can picture a few more, Elma, I, I can picture a few more faces but I can't get their names. But thank you for those happy memories that I've had. Um, I want to wish all the parishioners of St. Andrews very, very happy feast. I want to pray today in a very special way 
for um, Monsignor Nereus, who was my parish priest. I joined the seminary uh, from the parish of St. Andrews and Monsignor Nereus was instrumental. I know we used to tease him and make fun of him, but he was instrumental uh, in pushing me. And I remember once he said to me, well, how long more are you going to wait? It's time for you to go. Uh, God bless you, Monsignor, wherever you are, for your love, your dedication to this Archdiocese. Rest in peace with Jesus today. Happy feast to all of you.